Hey there, welcome to Supercharge Fridays. We are at week, 40, uh, week 46, week four, I have no idea, I've lost count, probably week 46 uh, of going live every week. How are you guys? Come in, in the comments, tell us where you are, what time is it? What's the weather like? We can all pretend we're sitting in a restaurant <laughs> having a nice cappuccino. And as you can see, I have a super special guest with me today. Bob is in the house and it's a little past, no, it's on the hour. It's eight in the morning for Bob. Mm -hmm. um, and Bob, is it snowing yet? No, no, it's not snowing. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Hey, I thank have, you for um, having me though, Sonal. Thank you No, my, my pleasure. I'm, I'm so uh, happy that you're here. And oh, I totally forgot. Happy Thanksgiving to all our uh, US uh, viewers and, and uh, Thanks. happy Thanksgiving, yeah. Bob. How was, how was Thanksgiving? A lot of food, a real lot, lot of food. <laughs> 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 I'm so, still, still recovering. Yeah, I can imagine. So all of you in the U.S. who've got this food coma and, you know, uh -huh. maybe there's a few of you in Chicago because I, I know Lauren's there and she's watching and it's like seven in the morning. You've got the food coma. Don't worry. This is happy hour. And hopefully looking, actually looking at a restaurant is not making it worse for you. <laughs> no, no. But I'm going to ask you, can I bug out half an hour early just to get my walk in? <laughs> Yes, joking. <laughs> I can imagine. So yeah. wonderful. And uh, we're going to talk today about stuff. Actually, we're going to talk about things career related. Why did I just say that? Yeah. Bob has a blog called thingscareerrelated.com. And I'm going to put it in the comments. I highly suggest you check it out because Bob is one of those relentlessly helpful people who's posting stuff, uh, interesting stuff, but very actionable stuff for job seekers. And Bob, I'm going to let you introduce yourself in a second. Um, and what we're going to be talking about today is all things career related, you know, to, to, you know, to, um, piggyback on your on your uh, blog and also you know what's going on what's going on with unemployment today we're going to talk to someone who's right in the thick of the action bob is right in the center of it meeting unemployed workers i'm guessing across levels bob uh, in different hierarchies uh, across levels in terms of um you know occupation and status um but mainly people who are 55 and over you know ah, that, ah, that, that, that's my general um, um that's your general uh, that's yeah. your job. I got it. So, whether you're 55 year old, 55 and over in the house right now, or in in the yeah. restaurant, let's say, because we feel like we're in a restaurant with you guys, or whether you're below, it doesn't matter. If you're much it younger, matter. it does not matter. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. If you're much younger, there's a high chance you have a parent who's above 55. So, I think this is extremely relevant. So, do share this with your uh, mm -hmm. network and do give us lots of hearts and likes and applauses because it's uh, it's like I said, wonderful for Bob to have you know joining us on this long week, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. And, and really appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to quickly go in and say a uh, shout out because we have some wonderful folks who've already logged in. Good evening, Gandhar. What did you say about okay. Apple? Okay. Is about <laughs> Fantastic. You, it, Ken. You, Ken? All right. <laughs> you know, Ken, uh, lovely to see you, Ken. Hey, yeah. Shishant in Bangalore, how are you? Risto is a dear friend in Finland who's a coach as wow. well. So the population is truly global. <laughs> it's very global. And can I yeah. say that? Can I say something without sounding like a show off? These are no. really wonderful people and oh, very intelligent. I think some of the most intelligent on, on LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, Mohammed Samani, how are you? Jihan, I hope I said that right. Jihan, uh, lovely to see you in Texas. Wonderful. What? Good. Hey, yes. Jeff. Hey, wow, happy after turkey yeah. day. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means, but it, it for me is very similar to when you have Diwali or a big holiday, the next day you're like, uh, like you know, you can't talk, you can't look at anyone. And I'm, I'm guessing that's the way I it get is. to say that Jeff is one of the top voices on LinkedIn. Jeff is amazing. Yeah, he is Jeff amazing. amazing. Jeff is very amazing. Very giving of his time. Yeah, and I know, Jeff, that you have the biggest heart. Because you do it for yeah. free. Yeah, you never charge anyone. You're amazing. So Ken is amazing. Uh, when it comes to LinkedIn oh. trainers, you're amazing. Bob, everyone's amazing. <laughs> uh, Kiyash is in uh, South Africa. Lovely to see you. Ooh, Kiyash, nice. Actually, nice. Yeah, yeah, she was following us for a while. And then she got a job. Good. Great for her. And uh, recently, and, and what she's doing is she's at work right now. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone. She's at work and she'll just take a few minutes, just come in to say hi, and then she's going to go back to work. So it's great to have support. Uh, and stuffed and turkey, totally wonderful. Hey, Ira, lovely to see you again. Where are you in Paris? Bonjour. Bonsoir. Ça va? <laughs> uh, George, Vidya, 
Hey, AJ, how are you? He's in uh, DC. Okay. Um, Shivangi, I know you're in India. And Vedya, Jeff, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jeff, did I say yes? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, conducting, okay, great. Uh, well, you're you conducting a session. I'm sorry, there's a, already a question. Yeah. Uh, conducting a session for my college juniors to share the first year experience really pumped up. Any advice? Be yourself. It's the most, I don't know. Uh, feel free to add anything, Bob. Just just remember, be yourself. Okay, so are her students like, watching this live? These are people watching us live. No, but conducting a session for my college juniors this year. She will be doing it at some point, I think. Oh, okay, okay. She'll be showing this at some point. Great, great. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, you know, great. these are my opinions alone, so I hope, hope right? most of what I say is accurate. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, awesome. Hey, Bupinder, great. So, um, Bob, uh, for those who don't uh, know you or, or aren't familiar with your blog, All Things Career Related, mm -hmm. thinkcareerrelated.com, and all the other stuff, uh, would love for you to introduce yourself to us. So, so I mean, what I do is what I really love, and that is helping people find work. I know that sounds kind of hokey, but I really do enjoy that. And you, you get the idea when you hear someone land, it's it's just great. Uh, so I do this by disseminating information through, well, you've mentioned my blog, and I'm, I'm approaching 1 million viewers over the tenure of it, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I also disseminate information through webinars, which I imagine I've done about a thousand of them. You know, just, just disseminating information on the job search, LinkedIn, introversion, EQ, whatever it may be. And then also I meet one-on-one -on -one with the higher level um, job seekers. And I've mentioned that most of them are in the 55 range, you know? Yeah. So that, that's what I do. And, you know, as I said, I really love it. I will say that one of my greatest accomplishments has been creating the first LinkedIn group at the career center and consequently having to develop workshops and webinars for that. So that's sort of my legacy and it just keeps, it keeps growing, you know, so, and I'm really happy to be here. Amazing. So first of all, a million, congratulations on the million, because that's a milestone. And I know it sometimes it can be a little vanity metric, but it's a milestone. And sometimes these validations, we need them, right? Yeah. So it, it's great. If you're not checked it out, I've put it in the, I've right here, I've displayed it. Check out this blog, follow Bob oh, on nice. uh, LinkedIn as well, Bob McIntosh. You'll find him. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, tag him in, uh, in, in, the, in the post today as soon as we finish. And Bob, talk to us about... Um, because we have options, right? And and you decided to go down this path. What made you start working as a coach, specifically helping unemployed people today? So back when I was in marketing, I was in public relations and I was pretty much peddling software that I didn't really believe in, but I really knew that I wanted to help people find work. Software and that I didn't believe in. Yeah, first of all, that sounds like you, something a lot of people in like marketing, right? Yeah, right, exactly. So. Um, you know, I knew I wanted to help people find work. And so I was trying to really pivot and move into the career space. And I did eventually. I, I landed in an organization, a uh, nonprofit, uh, Experience Works, and I was running a computer program, training program for um, people with disabilities. And all the while I was looking at career centers because that's where I thought I wanted to be. And eventually I reached out to someone at the Career Center of Lowell which is now Mass Hire Little Career Center. And sure enough, they were hiring for a disability navigator position. I loved it. You know, I loved that position because you meet so many interesting people, but I really wanted to lead workshops because little benotes to me, I have a little ham in me. And so, you know, I like to be in front of people. Um, so I volunteered, and this is one, one, one trick that people can do, is really try to form your future position, you know? And so I volunteered to do workshops. And, and then when, so when the position came open for workshop facilitator, I was issuing. So that, that's the story to, as to where I am right now. That's something very key, uh, what you said here. And I'm going to, sorry, I'm feeling hot. Uh, you said something very key, and I'm remembering what it was. Give me a second. <laughs> you um, got known. You got known in a certain area. Yeah. You worked in that area, 
uh, obviously this is what we call personal brand in this day and age but back then i don't think we called it anything so that when a position came up there was no like there was no there was no thinking it was like this position goes to bob so there's something to be said there yes networking is important yes you can apply once in a while although it's a bit of a lottery but just you know letting your work speak for itself and i'm guessing jo uh, bob you also made the ask oh point. absolutely absolutely yeah as soon as i knew the position was open and that's the thing is that organizations would prefer to hire people who they know and, and trust and yeah. Their employees yes. are usually it, yes. but you know how it goes. Sometimes yes. you can't yes. find someone within. Hey, Lauren, how are you? Yeah, good morning, Lauren. Lauren says. Oh, this you just morning. interrupted my thought, woman. Okay, I'm so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so so back, you know, back to what I was saying is that they prefer to hire someone from within, and so I was it. Um, but it doesn't always work that way. You know? It doesn't always work that way, but we do yeah. know, and, and uh, you know, having an HR background, and I know a few others in the in the viewers who are also from HR. Uh, I remember the ratio when I was recruiting heavily; it was sixty percent, sixty percent from within. Oh, really? Forty percent from outside. Yeah, because the the fresh blood people always crave that a new set of eyes, etc. If a company is in a growth phase, then de definitely you want to promote internal talent, uh, potential, avoid uh, frustration which sets in. You're like, oh, I wasn't sure, considered. Sure. But then at the same time, you know, you're not going to get some of the skills from within, and and sometimes there's also a a, a natural uh, attrition, you know, uh, which is healthy. Um, so fabulous. But, but let, me, let me let me also add that there are some very qualified people, some new blood who can bring in great ideas, who you may pass over, and that's too bad because you miss out on that. But but you know yeah, like you're saying, you'd like to hire or promote someone from within because you know, you know they're they're, they're what they can do, what they can't do. So it's it's more of a safer bet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, I think we know this, right? As uh, We may not know this as job seekers, but it's interesting for job seekers to know because recruiters know this. Recruiters can make two errors, the alpha error or the beta error. The alpha error is hiring the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, they look great. They have, you know, Bob, the halo effect. Wait, right? The wrong person or the right person? No, so alpha error is hiring the wrong person, which is that halo effect because they look so good on paper and they are so confident oh, and charming right. and beautiful and, and like, oh, I love this. And the beta error is rejecting the right person. So that's what you just uh, said. Okay. Okay. That's what you just Two, said. Yep. Uh, I want to talk about the thing that you just said, which, uh, to be honest, has really touched me. And I'm not, uh, you know, um, trying to patronize you here. But I heard three things. You love working with people who are unemployed helping them people mm -hmm. with disability you have experience uh with people with disability and people above uh 50 55 years of age yeah. and number four yeah. introverts <laughs> it's like, it's like where, gonna, where are you going with this <laughs> i'm saying it's like you're gunning for the underdog you know the dark horse where like people don't want to necessarily always pay attention to them but you're like, I'm on your side. You well, know? I mean that that's why in my tagline I I'm on the front line for you know job seekers because I I have no choice as to who I serve, whereas someone who's an individual you know someone who's a um, job coach um, does. Uh, so yeah, so but I enjoy it though. You know, it's not yeah, like if it. you didn't enjoy it, then you wouldn't go to work. No, but, absolutely. But I truly enjoy it. So. No, I, yeah. I, I, love, I love that. And uh, I, I know that Ken, uh, <laughs> intro, hashtag introverts unite. Um, so though, though, this is this is great. I, I, ha I have to say, I haven't met anyone who's who's uh, so focused on, on doing this. So um, ab absolutely great work. And I'm not surprised about the 1 million, um, you know, views on your blog. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about the stuff that you're going through day in and day out. Bob, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the most common questions that you're getting from people who are very actively out there hunting, hunting and gathering. Right. And what do you say to them when they have? So maybe top two, top three questions that you receive from them and, and your tips, because it's a really broad question. So I'd love to hear um, sure, your, sure. your take on it. Well, well, this is a this is a very common question. And, and there's an important response to this. And that is. Um, how can I make my resume stronger? And 
So that I get that question. Everyone mm -hmm. really wants to have a great resume template. And first of all, I say, well, are you talking about one resume or many resumes? Because that's really what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to tailor your resume to each job that you can. And then I say, and how are you disseminating your resume? In other words, how are you getting your resume to the hiring manager or hiring authority? And they're like, well, I'm applying online. You know, mm -hmm. some people, one person said to me, she's shot out like 300 applications with her resume and nothing. Well, so so what I tell them is that you can't just do that. You really need to, you know, locate people who can help you get your resume into the hiring manager's hands because yeah. that person is a decision maker. Um, some of them grasp it and some of them just don't. And the, the ones who don't, their job search is longer than the ones who grasp it. Another question I get is, are there any jobs, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. especially today? Mm -hmm. And I say, yes, there are. I mm -hmm. say, I'm seeing many people getting interviews, so there are jobs, but yeah. it is tighter. It is more competitive. You're really going to have to just, you know, do your best in terms of networking, in terms of becoming a referral. And then, then, then there are questions about around the LinkedIn profile, around the headline, around the about section, you know, questions about the profile because you know for once in their lives they have to use LinkedIn in some cases they haven't looked for work in say 10 20 30 40 years yeah. and so they're, they, they you know they have to use LinkedIn um, and so they have a lot of questions about that yeah 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 much so, um, it um, yeah. no I can I can understand that and it's a it's a real gut punch right particularly if yeah. you've never done it and the whole reaching out to people especially on LinkedIn, can feel a little bit icky. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's a question on behalf of uh, other introverts out there. Mm. We've talked about this so many times, but I think, you know what they say, um, repeti uh, repetition results in reputation. So there's no harm listening to something over and over again till it becomes like second nature for you. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm you know beating a, a, a dead horse by, by repeating it, but honestly... It's shocking, Bob, and you've seen it how many times people are still relying on old formula. And, you know, um, like Marshall Goldsmith said, what got you here won't get you there. So <clears throat> tell us about if I'm introverted and this whole thing feels a little icky. What can you say to help me? Well, you know, first of all, introversion, extroversion is about energy level. It's about comfort level. So um, I don't really think that whether you're an introvert or not matters. I think what really matters is if you get it. And yes, you are going to have to exert a little more energy in terms yeah. of talking with people, uh, being in groups when we yeah. get there, when we get yeah. there, even yeah. on Zoom, for instance. Yeah. So I'm going to say just battle through it, you know, yeah. just just do what you know is right and yeah. forget the fact that you're an introvert because sometimes they think there's a self-fulfilling prophecy where you think, oh, if I'm an introvert, then I must be shy. Well, that's not it. You know, yeah. you're not shy. It, you know, shyness is, is, is uh, I don't know. It's, it's not, it's not about introversion, but in any case, um, I'm going to say, just forget that. Forget the fact that you're an introvert and think about the, the traits that extroverts have and try to exercise those. You know, if an extrovert is outgoing, then you can be outgoing. I mean, you can be animated. I look at me, you know, and it just, you don't have to do it all the time. You just have to do it at the right times. And in terms of networking, you gotta do it. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to network in large groups. No. Extroverts may prefer that, but you can network in smaller groups, buddy groups, you know, grab virtual coffees, whatever it may be. And in fact, they may be more um, productive than larger networking groups. I, I agree. Think, I agree. You know? so you're introverted, uh, Bob, according to your LinkedIn headline? Yeah, proudly. <laughs> so I want to I want to I want to call this out. This is, oh, I should so have happy. had a copy of my book. Oh. You got what's a copy of your book? What's your book? What's your book called? Um, interviewing for uh, uh, Gosh, I don't remember. Um, introverts uh, interviewing techniques. I have a thing called Google. I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Dear friend, uh, give me a moment. Uh, Bob Mac Job interviewing for introverts. Job interviewing. Ah, 
I got it. Um, I'm just going to take a second mm -hmm. and share and do a little quick. There we go. Hey, guys. <laughs> Job interview success for introverts. And if you go there, check it out on this one. This one. Thank you. There's our man. There's our man, Bob McIntosh. Um, if this is something that's interesting for you, I highly suggest uh, you 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 take a look and um, probably get a, get yourself a copy because why not learn from someone who's been there, done that, as opposed to you know academic theoretical stuff, which may or may not apply to you. So first of all, I want to say thank you for calling this out because um, I feel sometimes that this is used like labels. To say I can't exactly. do this, I can't do this because right, right. Dash dash, dash. and uh, Ken might come as uh, Ken. Oh, Ken agrees with us. I was interested. I thought he might have an interesting uh, debate there because uh, he talks about introversion as well, and it means so many different things to different people. But the main thing to focus on is where is your energy coming from. Exactly. And, uh, it means you have to maybe prep a little bit more, show up with a little bit more effort to a meeting, whether it's one on one or whether it's in a group. But once it's done, you can go and replenish your energy in many ways. Exactly, right? exactly. If it means getting a book, read a book. If it means Netflix, <laughs> if it means doing meditation, that's fine. And it's happened to me that because I'm very extroverted, so I don't want to give advice because I I feel like I'd sound like a phony. But friends of mine who like did a webinar with me, like LinkedIn Live, for example, who came on my LinkedIn Live and they were like, <sighs> and I stopped uh, the broadcast. How are you doing? And I'm exhausted. I have to go lie down. <laughs> Yeah. Like for, because for me, I, I, I'm hear you. I hear you. Yeah, so that's great that you know you don't use that as something uh, as an ex excuse, if I can say. Um, wonderful. No, but you're right because we recharge our battery by being alone. You know, like I, I look forward to the end of the day. Uh, yeah. Whereas an extrovert yeah. may recharge their battery by being with other people, and after a long day of job searching or um, just working, they. Okay, someone wrote something. No, 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 no. These are these uh, are. You know, they, they 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 can go out. They can go out yeah. to a large networking event when we get back there, where we were, and you know, uh, and they no, love no. it. They dig it. You know. Yeah, I totally understand. Sorry, so introverts have to really just force themselves to do it. That's. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, I sometimes flash the comment because I'm like, it's great for the audience to see what somebody's saying, but it doesn't mean uh, you don't. You know, it, it doesn't mean you have to stop speaking. It's. Uh, I'm sorry if it distracts you, including Lauren Greif. <laughs> Uh, but it's totally. I completely agree. Hi, Ilmi. Ilmi's in Indonesia. Uh, well, yeah, I'd like to know her, what her um, recharge routine is. Yeah, so share with us Ilmi, what your uh, recharge routine looks like because I think it's uh, it's really interesting. Bob the Builder. <laughs> I don't know if you have kids, Bob, but uh, there's a character. Uh, Are there any more Bob jokes? <laughs> So we have a question yeah. already. I was going to ask you uh, something, but uh, we see that Gandharv has a question. So what do you have to say to passive candidates? Is there any secret formula to the best LinkedIn profile to leave an impact in the professional fraternity? Because you're, you've are you been training on LinkedIn for so long, right? Oh, you mean for those who are already working? Uh, yeah, good question. Yes, I think so. Somebody oh, who's okay. already employed, but you want to be like this magnet and, and get offers okay. to come to you. Yes. Um, stay on LinkedIn. OK, keep using LinkedIn. A, a, many people make the mistake that when they leave their position and they start using LinkedIn and it gets them the job or it doesn't. But whether or not it gets you the job, just stay on LinkedIn. Keep networking. Keep building up those endorsements. You know, keep keep uh, perfecting your your about section, your experience section and, and, and also keep networking in person. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now you mentioned something about LinkedIn being a great way to network. Well, I see it as a supplement to in-person networking. In other words, I think in-person networking is much more effective than LinkedIn. But LinkedIn is a great way to reach out to people while you're working. OK, reach out to people and connect with them in a personal way. You know, in some in some Someday, Jeff Young and I are going to get together. And well, he lives in Ohio, I think. But, you know, um, Mr. Lang, we're going to get together and, um, you know, th then we're going to solidify our relationship. Yeah, yeah, I 100% agree. And, and I, I have a few people in the in the viewers here for, with whom uh, I don't have to even spell. They know who they are. But the idea is to get the relation. LinkedIn is a medium. It's not the end. It's the means no. to the end. And the end is get off of LinkedIn 
uh, and and uh, have a stronger relationship. So it could also be Zoom because today, what is off of LinkedIn? It's Zoom, right? But when the mm -hmm. pandemic is over, obviously it's in person. Um, exactly. And I continue. To, so related to what you said, uh, and wait, wait, uh, based on what Gandharv asked, and also what Ashish is asking about the profile. So you know, before you answer, Bob, because I do want to say, Ashish, I have a, a checklist on my uh, LinkedIn profile page. A free checklist feel free to go and download it because it has specific things you can do for your profile because it's very detailed right as opposed to saying one thing it's got 14 different uh, sections that you can cover but if you want to say something bob overall about how to make the linkedin profile attractive your top tip what would that be <laughs> there's so much I know. <laughs> you and i talked about this we said we could do a whole you know we could we could do a whole day on it. okay so to answer Ashish's question, I would say slowly. Just do it slowly. Don't don't draw attention to you know if you're con connecting with um, your people you work with. Don't draw attention to that. Just just do it slowly. But if you, so, to your question, oh, I still think the experience section is the most important section. I mean, a lot of people think the about is oh, important. Some yeah. people think you know a lot of actually. I did a poll and. People believed that it goes in this order. The headline, most important to people. Um, the experience, number two, and then about. Um, so I would go with those three as the most important sections. But then you, then you have your photo, you know, which is very important. You have background image. I mean, all of this is all of this brands you. And, and you have to do it in a very consistent and, and impactful way. So you, you can't skimp in your about section. You can't skimp in your um, headline. And, and for your experience section, I, I just hate to see people just list their title, where they worked, and their yeah. tenure of employment. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, you should know what I do. But no, no. Even if you're a VP of an organization, at least talk about what the organization does. You know. Okay. Um, um, OK, great. Um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go a little bit more hands on. So what you're just saying is uh, I'm going to go deep in. So we always talk about this stuff, but I have to admit, Bob, I don't talk a lot about how to treat the experience section. So mm -hmm. talk to us about like what is a what is a good way to do it and what's a bad way to do it? OK, so I, I suggest to people that they take their resume mm -hmm. and they put it in, you know, and then they copy it to their profile. I know people are, are gasping right now. They're like, no, that's not what you do. But no, 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 that's not what you do. And and then you just stick with the highlights. You know, you stick oh, yeah. with the most important accomplishments and yeah. and personalize it. You yeah. know, if you if you zoom in on my opening statement, um, I, I personalize it. I use it first per person point of view, like I would in my about section, in my headline. Um, it's a, I want to say this job, Bob, because this is very interesting. So it's like to everyone who's watching, right? This is free advertising space. So don't let it go to waste. And we always say that, and I have to say I'm one of them. We always say that uh, for me, it's the Fab Four. Your picture, your banner, very clean, very simple. When you immediately see it, you know Bob is an authority in his space. So that's great. The about section, number three, and... Uh, no, that's four. So the banner, the picture, the headline, there you go. Um, he's also searchable, right? Career coach, you know, even if, you know, Bob, you don't think every single day that you're a career coach every single day, but this is what people are looking for. They're looking for a LinkedIn trainer. You want to be found. There's a little unique line about you. Uh, so that's number three, because that's SEO, right? That helps. And then obviously you've got your <clears throat> easy to read uh, bullet points as opposed to one blob, because some people do that. There's one blob. Or worse than that, there's a default demonstrated experience in the you know oil and gas industry. Like, come on, mm -hmm. you can do better than that. And finally, in the in the experience, what you're saying is copy paste it. I've actually never heard this advice. This is brilliant. Copy paste your CV and take out the stuff which is less interesting and only focus on maybe I'm guessing Bob one or two achievements. Simple. Uh, well, if you expand it, I think there are like ten that I list. Okay, 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 okay. But, so, but I also personalize those with first person point of view. So, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. to me, the resume, I mean, the profile is a personal resume. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm, if you look mm -hmm. at it that way, okay. it's a networking document. Okay. But, okay. Great. I think that's very interesting. There are different ways to do things. Do what mm -hmm. works. 
for you because at the end of the day what matters is outcomes and, yeah and, and when you tell me who the premier network um train i mean sorry the linkedin trainer is who knows all the answers to it then let me know because yeah, i'll copy that yeah. person's information <laughs> it doesn't matter no. and no offense no offense you could be uh, a person whose name starts with like a Jeff or a Ken or a Bob or a Kevin or an Andy or Richard uh-huh. or John. Or okay. awesome. <laughs> it doesn't matter because no. things are changing every day. And I'm yeah. not even talking about the algorithm. That is a totally different story. But I'm talking about just learn, like the knowledge. It's impossible for one person to know everything. So definitely different points of view. Mm-hmm. So wonderful. Um going to quickly look at the because there's some stuff going on here hopefully ashish and gandharv that answers your question uh people are talking about uh in um introversion versus uh extroversion so that's lovely uh ken uh and uh, same goes for me it goes without saying hey books how are you buddy good to see you bob has a link which i'm happy you shared uh sorry jeff has a link uh which uh, we will definitely check out uh reading books uh sitting oh this is how she recharges right uh, not so crowded mm. park uh coffee or tea observing the surroundings listening great. to podcasts yeah. that's wonderful that's great Excellent. everything it it differs for uh, many people i like, I like those techniques you see me yeah. i think there's something about being in nature it's replenishing it's mother nature yeah. we don't have to try too hard it's the best thing we have now yeah it's the best thing we have you know, now what do you think yeah I agree with you totally. And any other um mistakes Bob that you see happening over and over again other than what you already shared? Mm. You know sometimes when you maybe you know it's it's you hard to like shake them up a little yeah. bit. Like. <laughs> it, it it's really hard to it, it almost sounds hypocritical because I'm not in their shoes, but I do see a lot of them sort of give up for a period of time yeah. um they're just exhausted and and so i i get that but it is a mistake and and then that's why i say it sounds hypocritical because i'm not in that position but i'll tell you and i know you wanted to talk about this is when i was unemployed i was terrible i was the worst unemployed person you could meet um i was angry i lashed out at people you don't want to do that you know bitter you mean just being very bitter better yes better about about the situation and and I was and I wasn't conducting the job search properly so you know learn from my mistakes really no i don't, I, don't I, be I, me no i i've <laughs> been unemployed. no absolutely i've been unemployed three times and there are so many things that i think i could do better for example wasting time uh uh-huh. with activities which i thought i'm rechar so what elmi mm-hmm. said I'm recharging that's the story I was telling myself but there's you can also reward yourself by recharging and not recharge more and then work less because there has to be some reward system uh bitterness is real bomb it's real you know at oh, some point you're like absolutely. What's wrong with these people like i have everything they need and they want the one thing i don't have the only one and then you vent <laughs> and the problem with venting to people around you even if they are close friends is nobody wants a sour puss around It's, mm-hmm. it's so that, that that may be the you know that's that's probably so now that's probably the best way to put it is don't let people see your anger so if i'm doing a job club like which is one of the things i do and people are you know just sour pusses um i understand they're upset i really get it but you have to come there with your smiley face fake it till you make it as i'd say um Yeah, yeah so don't, don't vent don't vent in public that that's a good good way to put it don't vent in public uh okay okay uh obviously you know take it with a pinch of salt see what works for you guys but nevertheless when you're looking for work um whether it's social media or whether it's your with, within your network you want to be that person i'm not saying make appearances right but uh, mm-hmm. and that that's not what bob is saying but uh actually what bob is saying is bob is bob hope I'm thinking of Bob and think <laughs> what is that baseball player <laughs> Bob is basically saying be Bob hope don't don't be bob bitter <laughs> if you could say but, that but, you know there there are times when you have to you have to just like let it go maybe you, maybe you have some pity parties every, every once in a while yeah. you know yeah. uh, just don't not in public because not in public. people 
you know, perception is really key. And if someone sees that you are angry and bitter, then how will they represent you for, you know, to someone who you, you want to meet? You know, how will, how will they be your reference if uh, they see you being bitter and angry? It's just human nature. It's human um, nature. And I think very good what you said. There's also a recency bias. So if someone mm -hmm. recently met with you and you were bitter, how can they be your champion? How can they be your ambassador? Exactly. Exactly. When, when they see that they're having a difficulty believing in you and they're not believing in you so much because you don't look like you believe in yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's harder, right? It is. Um, it's tough. it's so, really tough. Yeah. 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 Hey, Joseph. And, sorry. Go ahead. Um, and, and this is why um, I, I'm inspired by the people that I serve. I really am. Um, because they, they, you know, for the most part, they're, they're not bitter. They, they go, you know, they go for the, you know, to the job club. Um, they put on their smiley face and I know they're hurting underneath. So they really inspire me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I, I, I totally get it. Um, so I, I was just going to say, uh, Joseph, uh, you, you can definitely expect honesty and transparency with Bob here. So uh, totally uh, amazing that he's here. Uh, Risto is a, a senior uh, semi-retired coach in Finland and he works with unemployed people as well. And two mistakes my clients did, number one, doing wrong things over and over. And even bragging, having sent 100 applications, I can get that. Number two, avoiding refresh, avoiding to refresh their education and competencies. Oh, gosh, the thing with number one is if you've been told it's a mistake and you're doing it again and again, that's not mistake. That's insanity um, completely. And then there's, people brag. I do get that. Uh, but... I don't know if it. I don't know if it makes you look good if you say this. I've done it five hundred times. This means you haven't learned that this isn't working for you. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh. Then. Uh. <laughs> be Bob Bo Hope. Don't be Bob Bitter. Yeah, that's funny, Lauren. How to write a meaning? Uh. How do you write mentioning degree or achievements with passing years and percentage? Uh, I'm not sure, Rishi, what you mean, but if you go to, I think you'll get some good um, uh, templates online and, and, you know, free online templates and you'll be able to see how to structure your resume. But typically what I like to do is on the left hand side of your resume, you have yours, you know, the years from when to when. And on the right hand side, the responsibilities, it's a very specific uh, technical question. I think mm -hmm. I think what Rishi might be meaning, you know, might be saying is how do you quantify your positive results when maybe you don't have the numbers, when you don't have the percentages? Feel free, Rishi, to tell us in the comments. You know, I, two different answers. Yeah, uh, and, and and I get that. I don't think everything can be quantified, especially when you don't have the positive results. However, if you use your imagination, you take out your calculator, you can come up with an approximation of. The degree of percent, you know, the percentage of success, um, the dollar amount, and you know, the numbers. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and by the way, Rishi, in case this was your question again, we're all interpreting it differently. But I don't know if you need to mention, for example, the grad, you know, the the result, uh, the grade. I think that could be the question. The result. Uh, oh, percentage. in terms of avoid, uh, if I, if you can avoid it because it's unnecessarily opening it up to bias. Hmm. Um, all right. And then, uh, Paulo, uh, hola, como estas? Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned about reaching decision-making people. So that's what he was listening to, that specific uh, selective listening. <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. a great question, mm -hmm. Paulo. Bob, what would you say is the best way to do this? It, it's, it's all about networking. But, you know, one way you can find out is by using LinkedIn's company feature and seeing who may be the VP of the organization, the director of, of engineering, you know, the um, manager of marketing. And you can reach out to people in that way and, and, and you know, start to build your foundation, start relationships. Um, but, you know, now that you know the person, who knows that person? That's the other yeah. thing. And yeah. so if you have a common connection with that person, yeah. Yeah. then like, let's say Sonal and I know, or Sonal knows someone I want to know, then I can reach out to her and say, hey, would you mind, you know, giving me an introduction to so-and-so? And, you know, if that works, then I, I, at least I have a pipeline to that person. And so um, otherwise, it's just your old-fashioned in-person networking. Uh, so let's see. Reach out. 
No, that, that's a great question. And uh, Paolo, don't yeah. underestimate the search functionality on LinkedIn. Bob explained it in a simple way because we don't have a lot of time, but it's mm -hmm. very powerful and you don't need a LinkedIn premium subscription. You can use the free version. It works just as well um, without the extra investment. It's very true, Ken. It's difficult for some people to, you know, the change is difficult. And gee, this is exactly what I was saying. Uh, nobody wants to be around like negative people. And it's already tough okay. enough what you're going through. And you don't want to drag, you know, some people are like, I'm miserable. I'm going to drag you down with me to my level of misery. So you want to be very careful and smell that. Yeah, I do have to respond to that because, well, you know, in in my terrible nature as a, as a job seeker, I uh, started off by going down to the local pub, um, Kilkenny's and Lowell, if any of you know that, and, you know, just meeting with uh, one of my former colleagues almost every night and commiserating over our job loss. And then I realized, hey, this is not working. You know, this is this is destructive. So you, I, I like the fact that you you try to avoid people who are negative. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, you obviously, I do say this by the way. So this is interesting. I do say that when we do virtual coffee chats, and you do, uh, and Lauren says the same. Measure it. You know, five to ten a week. Track mm -hmm. it. That can be a mixed group. It can be uh, fellow job seekers. It can be uh, people who you know are working in your target company because it's a friend of a friend of a friend because of LinkedIn search. So it, the the more mixed it is, the better it is. If it's only job seekers day in and day out, sooner or later you're going to be whining and complaining because if it's not you, it's the other person who you know, sure. who's bringing yeah. negative energy. So great, that's fantastic. Uh, Yes, Ken, totally. It's all about sales and every no gets <laughs> That's beautiful. That's very motivational. Uh, list degree true, true. books or not. Ah, so this is an interesting one, Bob, because uh, I have heard different opinions. There's some people, for example, on LinkedIn, when they right. have the graduation, you know, let's say they went to X uh, college, you don't see the year. And there's some people like me who put the year, I don't care, but there are people, others who are like, no, because it can open you up to age bias, so ageism. Yeah. Do you have any opinion on that? No, I would, you know, for that reason, um, ageism, I, I would not list the degree for older workers and even younger workers, because don't forget that younger workers are discriminated okay. against as well. Okay. You know, they, yeah. Right. So no degrees. Okay. And, and re recruiters are, are used to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a feeling, uh, Bob, I could be wrong here, but I have a feeling this is quite specific in, um, in the US that one has to be very careful of. Uh, uh, of, I'm not saying ageism doesn't exist in other countries. It does. But I feel like uh, this is specific advice I've heard from fellow like career uh, coaches, LinkedIn coaches in so the US. So obviously apply your own discretion, G, what you feel comfortable with. But uh, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, Bob has given very clear reasons why uh, he would prefer to leave it out. If you guys have opinions in the um, in the audience, if you have something you know, either for or against it and you feel very strongly about it, feel free to share. Uh, it's perfectly fine. Hey, Kevin, good to see you. Uh, better late than never. So let's talk about what's going on with our mental health. And I want to say specifically, because we've talked a lot about job seekers. Ooh. Job seekers have a lot of attention right now, Bob. And in a good way. Yeah, everybody wants to help job seekers. There's a lot of compassion. I'm not saying job seekers have it easy. Don't get me wrong. Who we are not talking about are essential workers. Um, I talked about it a long time ago. So, you know, we're not specifically saying essential workers in the grocery stores and, and the hospitals. It's a big topic. We don't have time for so much like a broad scope. But what do you do today if you're a coach or a consultant listening today and you are helping people in some capacity or the other? Um, you know what they say? You can't pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. And that's one metaphor. The other one is the shoemaker's children always go barefoot. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say to that? And, and how are you doing with everything right now? Um, I, I try not to internalize too much. I try not to think about their plight. Uh, I had a job club. I'll just tell this short story uh, where I asked at the beginning, I asked, so, you know, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? And, and, and as soon as that came out of my mouth, I'm like, oh, no, should I have asked that? Because what what if they couldn't afford to have a Thanksgiving meal? Well, fortunately, they got really pumped by that, you know, answering that question. And it, it was a great session. Um, I heard a lot of great stories. 
So, um, you know, I try not to internalize too much because if you do, for those of you out there, including yourself, who are trying to help job seekers, then it, it, it can be pretty sad. It, it, you know, if you think about it and if you think about what they're going through, uh, if you remember being unemployed, um, if you remember not having the, um, you know, the finances to take care of matters, if you remember the ups and downs, the emotional roller coaster that you rode, then it, it, it just brings you down. And so, mm-hmm. number one, I try not to internalize it too much. Um, and then I also try to stay active. I try to exercise uh, because really a healthy body is a healthy mind. Um, I try to disseminate more positive information on LinkedIn and especially nowadays. Um, and I see this a lot. I think I see a lot of posts that are more positive in nature than, than negative. So, you know, those are just some of the things that I, um, I do to try to deal with um, being on the front line, you know, just like yeah. Yeah. seeing it all day, every yeah. day. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I have no delusions that I'm like a nurse or a doctor or, or, you know, first responder. No, but, but I do see, you know, I do see some stuff that makes me sad. It just, yeah. um, no, I, so. I completely agree. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And I want to just bounce this off because um, we are creatures of habit. So, you know, you're watching whether you celebrate Christmas, Diwali, uh, Hanukkah, New Year. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing for New Year's? What are you doing for that? It's such a regular habitual question. And then you're like, oh, shucks. And, you know, if it, let's say, comes out of your mouth and you didn't mean it. Also, the other thing which we didn't talk about is COVID, right? So you may want to do everything. You have a job. You're really happy, but you can't see your family because the, the borders are closed. So it's like you can also be like, oh, I'm so sorry. That was such a stupid question you know you I, I do that and the person's like oh no don't worry we're actually doing a you know we're preparing everything and we're going to eat turkey at the same time on zoom or whatever uh but obviously rethink some of those habits because they don't always apply and somebody might be hurt somebody's lost a loved one uh and the second thing which you're saying is is very interesting i mean very pertinent to, to today is you're saying that you're seeing more positive things on LinkedIn today than negative. Um, And you try to post more positive. So what you post, yes, you control. What you're seeing is that, so Bob, that means you've curated your feed. So we've talked about this a lot here on Supercharge Fridays. If there's stuff coming in your feed, which is not helping you to get to your goals faster, it's rubbish, it's you know, horses, cats, whatever, whatever, negative person who's always complaining, you know, that one person who's always got a problem. It's like, you know, you see that products on Amazon, five star reviews. There's always that one person who's giving the one. one. So (laughs) you want to just curate your LinkedIn feed that you don't, you can control it. You can't control the news on BBC, CNN, but you can control your feed. So curate it. And that's what I'm guessing you've done, Bob, that you've unfollowed a few characters out there that are not really you know, uh, pumping you up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will unfollow people who, you know, like trolls for instance, but, yes. but what I'm seeing on LinkedIn and I think it's become more acceptable are more is more personal information. You know, um, I, I, I saw a post about tables, for instance, someone's psyched about tables, uh, you know, Thanksgiving posts that were personal. Um, I love to see military posts, um, you know, that are a little more personal in nature. I, I think we've become more accepting of those, you know, whereas in the past we'd be like, go to Facebook, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely. I just want to make, I, I think, you know, I think we're trying to, we're trying to support each other in this yes. really, really bad time. COVID. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent agree with you. Just a lighthearted comment on the side, because it's really funny. Somebody posted, I can't remember who a few days ago that the day I, I'm on a webinar or on live or whatever. My neighbor decides to, um, you know, do the, you know, uh, they're breaking. So my point is, somebody is cutting. It yeah, right, right. Can you hear? Work, right. Yeah. Can you hear it? No. I can't hear. Can you, you, oh, you have no. leaf blower in the background. Yeah, there's somebody who's cutting a tree right now. You can't hear it, right? I it's can't hear it. To me. Okay, perfect. That's cool. <laughs> no, it's only. I don't know about everyone else, but I have twenty percent hearing loss, so that's the joke in my family. 
Okay, okay. No, if you can't hear it, then nobody can hear it. So that's that's great. Um, I'm just going to jump into the comments before I go to you because I have other questions for you. I we're just about 11 minutes to go, and I'm trying to. Ho hopefully, we will respect the time as well. And Risto says, my experience has been that we list the years. You know, when we talked about that comment, more important. Oh, yeah. Tell the reader that you have learned all the way. And there's also recent notions, of course. I, I completely agree with you. We do take, we tend, I think we do tend to take that um, for granted. The bitter truth is everyone wants ready-made HR. Do hiring managers really discount the aspiration levels of a candidate in contrast with technical skill set? Because if candidates go traditionally, their resume gets outrightly rejected because of misfit due to multiple reasons. I don't know if you want to say something specific here, Bob, because I, Gandharv, to answer you, I, I'm not looking for, like Ken says, I'm not looking for a pink unicorn when I'm hiring. I, I know that doesn't exist. So it's about the right fit, but... I, I'm not understanding whether this person feels that resumes are um, rejected outright. Uh, for what reason was it? Because they are, are not able to assess future potential as opposed to, oh, this person doesn't meet um x y z criteria your x y z criteria gandharv are you can't control those those are where you you know like what did you study what have, where have you worked what is the kind of work you've done if if that's relevant then it goes further right, right and then exactly. interviews then it's your interpersonal uh, problem solving conflict management communication everything that is comes under soft which i hate i hate that word soft yeah, skills yeah. nothing soft about it i think for me gandharv that's the way um, I would uh, answer, and I'm going a bit quick because we want to make sure Bob is able to get ahead with his day. Bob, so Bob, you're working. It's a regular day, or you have your, your day off today? Oh no, no, we have a day off. Um, but, but I mean, in terms of resumes, and re and remember, we, we talked about how the um, it, it's a tougher market out there, yeah. so employers can be more selective. And if your resume gets through the applicant tracking system, you know, based on having the proper keywords and density thereof then that's great, but then it needs to be read by human eyes. And yes. so I think that's where he's at and saying that they're looking for the unicorn um, or the purple squirrel, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, so employers do have that luxury. Uh, so yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad that they don't look past not having you know, nine out of the 10 skills, technical skills they're looking for, but really looking at some of the strong transferable and even personality skills if you can show that on your resume um, and you know making a decision to interview someone based on those uh, it, it's just uh, well, what can you say you know well, no absolutely I think that if you you know follow because um, Bob's blog and, and I have a couple of videos on this on YouTube there's a lot of free resources out there that please take advantage of on how you can make your resume stand out from the rest even if you've seen this before, rewatch it. It's not a one and done thing. We're learning sometimes. We're relearning and we're unlearning things that um, didn't or they worked for us before, but they don't work for us anymore. Um, hey, Clive. And we see somebody new here. Hi, Nicole. Uh, so Clive is saying, why are HR folks and hiring managers biased against people getting their degrees later in life? Do they not appreciate lifelong learning? In my opinion, anyone can get a degree in their 20s as a full-time student. Hmm. I got to, I have to admit, I haven't experienced that. Um, I haven't either, Clive. So, so if you're talking, for example, uh, like an uh, executive MBA uh, or any course or any degree, I actually prefer to see that because it shows that you're hungry, ambitious, motivated. So if you've come, maybe you've come across everything is through our lens, right, Clive? So it's also possible that uh, your experience has been different and, and Bob and mine. You can't control that. I, I would see that as a plus. I would totally see that as a plus because most likely Clive earned his degree while working full time. And that's another reason why you just leave the dates of graduation off your education. Okay. Because if you're running into that Clive, most likely it's because of ageism. If yeah. you have your degree of your bachelor's as 1981, and, and then you have your MBA as 19, where are we in, 2007? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, know, I understand. No, I understand. Even uh, later than that. It just, it just gives uh, room for ageism. Okay. So if you've been told not to add the earth and Clive, you go with you go with what feels right to you. Okay. And and G says, if anything else, she's a recruiter. It honestly doesn't matter. And you got to make the most of your time. Yeah. So wonderful. Um, 
Bob, is there anything some people can do who are already working today to help job seekers in your experience that they don't do enough? Um, I, I, I think it's to be sensitive. Uh, you're talking about people who are working or who may be retired and someone comes over for Thanksgiving dinner and they're not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's being sensitive. It's not even bringing up the issue. Um, yeah. It's it's just, I wrote this one post where it was about be kind to people who are not working. Don't ask them, so why are you, why aren't you working? You know, don't do that. You know, just yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Um, I would also say that give them some, you know, some, uh, give them some slack. If they need to take a week off, I mentioned earlier, you know, not taking time off, I mean, or taking too much time off. I'm talking about like months, but you know, give them some slack. If you are a spouse of someone who's working, uh, who's looking for work rather then give them some slack, let them take a day or two off um, just to sort of decompress uh, because yeah. they do need that. Yes, 100%. I totally agree with you. Hey, Shivangi. So the question you're asking is actually pretty much what we're talking about. Uh, today which is about you know people about 55 so if you're just joining us perhaps go and um watch the replay but is there any other thing you want to add here bob with relate you know related to people um in their 40s and above on how they can uh stand out and uh, address the fact that yes uh jeff i completely agree and i'm proud of my age as well we did a whole linkedin live on, on ageism uh but the point is at the end of the day those who are looking for people they just they are there is a clear bias sometimes so any specific thing you want to say whether it's interviewing or the resume you mentioned for example the the years in the education but anything else yeah so for the written communications including resume and, and linkedin profile i would focus mainly on the more um and especially for the resume uh the uh the more um related accomplishments um the ones that matter most to the employer and I wouldn't exceed 10 or 15 years in the work history because let's face it back then what you did probably isn't relevant to today and, and that's the argument I give for going no further back or 10 to 10 or 15 years you know that's one thing I suggest is make sure that you have relevant accomplishments on your resume that it is tailored to the employer's needs. In other words, you've read the job description very carefully. You understand what the employer wants. And, and so you get an interview and go in there, you know, appearing young, despite you have gray or white hair, white beard, go in there appearing young. I talked to a gentleman who was about 64 years old. He appeared to be the youngest 64 person I knew. I mean, he, he, he appeared to be younger than me. And um, it's just, it's all in the attitude. It really is. Don't go into the interview with a chip on your shoulder thinking, oh, the interviewer is definitely going to discriminate against me based on my age because then the battle's lost, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and do all the right things. Follow up afterwards, follow up with thank you notes and so forth. Um, just, just, I guess, basically be vibrant. Show that, yeah. show that energy. Yeah, no, love that. Uh, it's so underrated. Attitude is so underrated. Uh, it's sure. all here. And I'm sure, Bob, you've seen this, and I'm sure, Shivangi, for you as well, you can come across someone who's 24 years old, but in reality, they're acting like 90 or like 93 years old in terms of the thinking and not being, you know, like real scared. And then you can come across someone who's 90 who's running a marathon. So it's a lot of it is here. So what we control, we control. So, and, and I have to add that I have I have come across people who were in their you know early twenties, and they were very responsible people, you know, very mature. So yeah, yeah. no, um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, yes, Kandar. Let's say someone gets employed in April twenty one. What can they do to justify their gap apart from being resilient and dwelling around the real story? So you're saying how do you address the gap, right, Kandar? I'm guessing you're asking for a friend. <laughs> Uh, but Bob, your your top your your tip because I have something specific I want to say. But your um, answer, what do you say to that? I say be transparent. I say that um, you know, if for the last company you worked, yeah. that you may put in parentheses somewhere COVID, COVID um, related or you know 
just just write COVID yeah. and um, let it's let understood. let the employer know that it was because of COVID. But I, I yeah. think they're going to know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. And I also say that um, I did a whole live stream back a few months ago on how to address the gap in your resume. If you're mm -hmm. looking for a job, Gandhar, if that interests you, please go in there. But I also say the same thing. Don't hide behind something. Don't try to show you were doing something. But in reality, it was unemployment. Obviously, stay busy if you can learn. And Risto talks about courses. We can't stress that enough. But don't lie. You know, don't try to be something. No, no, no. It, no, it, it's not a good thing. You can definitely no. tell. Um, we talked about networking and all of that stuff, but I always forget to mention all of you who are watching today, I don't know how many you are. It doesn't matter if you're 100 or five. The point is do connect with each other. Write a personalized connection request. Hey, Bob, saw you in this Super Dutch Fridays with Sonal and loved it. And I specifically love Get in the practice of connecting with people where there is a context. Do not send blind connection requests, but also do that with each other, you know, and and follow each other's work, support each other, help each other. Um, if 2020 has taught us anything, it's about the power of community. And thanks to the internet, thank goodness, we're not, we're not as isolated as sometimes we think we are. So having said that, <laughs> you said it, Bob, drop the chidge, uh, drop the chip and the dude around aid. <laughs> Drop the attitude, man. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, if Fine. there's one thing, Bob, yeah. I don't you agree, but if there's one thing that turns me off um, in job candidates is uh, a chip on the shoulder. Oh, you can see it. You can smell it. Hey, you know we what we have accomplished? No barking dogs. <laughs> Nora had barking dogs today. That's an achievement. Yes, that. and we didn't even hear someone jackhammering down your street. So You didn't hear it because it's, it's insanely yeah. loud, but you didn't hear it. So, no, that's wonderful. Uh, after getting rejected in so many places, Shivangi says most uh, people mostly are not as confident. Oh yeah, I can totally understand that, Shivangi. Um, yeah, I'm I'm glad you're being a very nice daughter. You're a very good daughter to take. You know, think about your dad. You've uh, you've 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 got to tell. You've got to help your dad. But at the end of the day, it's got to come from him. Uh, at some point, something will click. You know, um, and. Um, he, there, there's lots of resources out there. You know, ask him to follow Bob's work. Bob is specifically helping people who are 55 and above. And there are other people like Bob. Just, you know, Hannah Morgan is a great one. And I'm hoping she's coming on Super Chat Fridays as well. And she's also working a, a lot with um, senior workers. So there's no end to resources. Shivangi, if you're in India, there's no end to good resources. You gotta, you gotta do your part. And he's gotta do his part, to be honest. Um, fabulous. Yeah. So, there, so there's theory, there's theory about how you can help someone build their confidence. But as you say, it comes from within. So there's theory that you, that says that if you write down 10, you know, um, accomplishments or every day you write down what you're happy for, um, that your confidence level or your self-esteem will, will rise. But it really, it, it does come from within, you know? Yeah, um, no, yeah, I totally agree. It's like, you know, people who say, I want to give up, uh, I want to give up smoking. You will give up one day when you don't want to. I mean, it, other people telling you, you know, it's bad for you, right? Mm -hmm. Same with people wallowing in self pity. I'm not saying your dad is wallowing in self pity, Shivangi, but it it can happen that misery it gets a bit addictive. Um, a pity party, you said, it gets a bit. Uh, pity parties can be fun, <laughs> and at some point, you realize, stop, snap out of it. <laughs> so um, let's put a limit want, on that. Let's say once a month or once every two months. Yeah, and then reward yourself yeah. with Netflix and Nutella. You can reward yourself. That's fine. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, um, they eat a pint of ice cream. Every yeah, morning. we gotta do what we gotta do, right? Different reach, different ways to recharge. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm done, and we're over the hour. But a last question, Bob, since you're here, and I'm being a little greedy. You sounded like you're exhausted. I'm no. done. <laughs> I'm done meaning I'm done bothering you, but I'm still very, I'm very, very energized with this discussion, and I want to ask you. If you could look back 20 years, 30 years, do you wish there's something you knew sooner in your career? Yeah. Um, and I mentioned this earlier. Be a better person. Be a better person when you're unemployed. You know, if you're talking about career advice, um, that's it. Just, just when you're out of work, just be a better person to yourself, to the people who are around you. Because remember, they are feeling it too you know and then and then do the proper job search read what's on linkedin read you know pick up 
um, what color is your parachute, whatever it may be. Uh, go to webinars, free webinars. You know, yeah. there's a lot of great information coming from people who, you know, not only job coaches, but also recruiters and HR who know what they're looking for in candidates. So I would just say, you know, do the proper job search. OK, networking. That's key. Um, becoming a referral. That's that's so key. Um, applying even online. That, that's fine. But don't make that your sole method of looking for work because it's your job search is going to be a lot shorter. Develop that company list, you know, 20 companies of which you're interested in working for. Um, but most importantly, be a good person. Be a good person. That's beautiful. You know? And I think that um, that's really well said. There's because, a... because I wasn't. <laughs> No, we all learn, uh, and nobody's perfect here. So yeah. um, I learned. I read this some time ago. <clears throat> the, the test of a person's character is what they do when they're down, and uh, that's the test. Some of us are down right now. Twenty uh, twenty has been a dumpster fire. What are you doing about it? That's the real test. And uh, but that's a a good euphemism for what I'm thinking. But go ahead. No, no, no. So that's it. Uh, so, so what you shared. So, so brilliant. Um, and now we're at the end. Uh, we're five minutes over the hour, and uh, I hope this was helpful to uh, all of you watching. As I said, please do go and follow uh, follow Bob uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, he posts every day. If I'm not mistaken, Bob, you post a poll. Also, not too. Yeah. You post a poll every Monday and different articles, uh, you know, on his blog, thingscareerrelated.com. Uh, Bob has a book, which I'll put in the comments, which I showed you some time ago. Do check it out. Uh, this has been such a pleasure. Thanks to you guys for being here today. It's always more fun when there's the, when there's a group. It makes it, you know, the energy is very different. So appreciate your time. It's, you know, you're busy people. So, you know, it's a Friday for you. So appreciate uh, you being here. Bob, stick around. I'm just going to uh, end the live stream. Take care, everyone. Uh, Be have safe. A good Be safe. Be safe. Yep. Don't forget your masks if you go out. Bye, everyone.